This is Residence 104.4 FM. Flipping marvellous. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you, to see you. Nice. Oh, no, he's gone now, isn't he? I don't know why I suddenly became Bruce Forsyth. You know, the entertainers. Are... Anyway, it doesn't really matter. How are you? Thank you for your company on this Literary London. Also, of course, as ever, we're on bohemianbritain.com, which is our new kind of space for dumping creative stuff. We're going to start book reviews, by the way, as well. So if, you, uh, if you'd like to be involved, um, the fee for working, of course, on bohemianbritain.com is the same as the fee for all my theatre um, exploits, which is a pint. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be alcoholic. Rob Williams, who I'm about to mention again in a moment, uh, is owed quite a lot of, uh, of uh, yeah, pints uh, for the stuff that he's done. Uh, so, yes, we're going to start book reviews. If you'd like to get in touch, you always can. Uh, it's uh, radio at mavericktheatre.co.uk. Radio at mavericktheatre.co.uk. Or you can get me now, individually, personally, on nick at bohemianbritain.com. Nick at BohemianBritain.com. So, yeah, if you fancy doing some book reviews, if you've read a good book recently, and it'll just be, I don't know, 20 words or so, and a picture of the cover, then that's what we're going to start doing. And um, But what we're also doing, as I mentioned last time, is today is Roll of the Drums. <laughs> I can't afford drums. Um, is uh, It's one of our legendary literary London Bohemian Britain request shows. Is it? I hear you cry. No, don't cry. Yes, it is. So thank you very much for uh, all the people. I had a load of emails, which is great. It's always nice to hear from you. Um, rather than me just, you know, talking into the ether. Uh, I do know, because I've been doing radio for a while now, that radio is, in a sense, one of the most sort of intimate mediums. People tend to watch television in groups, but they tend to listen to uh, radio individually. Or, of course, now podcasts, radio. Listen to me, eh? What century? Oh, blimey. Um, but we've had some brilliant requests, and so for the next half hour or so, kick back and have a listen to, um, well, you know, some interesting and quite out there requests, not least of which is this first request email came in from Joanne. Joanne is in Newcastle. Now, I don't know if that's Newcastle and Tain. Don't do the accent, Nick. Don't do it. Or Newcastle in the Midlands. But anyway, Joanne wrote from Newcastle, sent me an email. Thank you very much, Joanne, for getting in touch. She said, uh, I loved your first episode of that thing that you wrote, the science fiction story, George Holmes and the Seven Dimensions. Thank you very much. Uh, if you don't know about this, it's a new kind of young adult. I think it's young adult. It's also, I now apparently know, it's a four-quadrant script. This is my screenwriter talking. Yeah, four-quadrant script called George Holmes and the Seven Dimensions. Um, I got together with a bunch of young people. Uh, they were lovely. They were so cool. Uh, and in fact, I'm on it as well. We did the very first demo uh, version of episode one, which lasts about seven minutes. And in fact, it's on this um, podcast. It's on this uh, radio. If you go to catch up again. Uh, on bohemianbritain.com, the first episode's on there. Um, and uh, it only lasts about seven minutes. And I've got the second demo that we're going to do. We're probably going to do a third demo after Christmas and just see if people like it. We'll, we'll carry on and do some more. But I'd forgotten how fabulous it was working with young people. Uh, <laughs> I say kids, but my mum always just say, what's a kid? A baby goat. Working with all these baby goats. Anyway, uh, thank you, Joanne. It's very kind of you. It's nice of you to say that. Um, we've actually had yes, one or two uh, emails and bits of feedback from New York uh, in the United States, which is rather lovely for George Holmes and Seven Dimensions. Um, anyway, she writes, as I say, I loved your first episode. Could you please play the main theme again? Also, I remember you did a version of Romeo and Juliet at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe a couple of years ago, which I saw. Ah, oh, really, indeed, Romeo and Juliet FC. I kind of renamed it afterwards. It's Romeo and Juliet, the traditional story, but instead of the two posh houses, they were two um, houses at the end of a road in Birmingham. Aston Villa and Birmingham City. Just pure hatred. I thought about doing Celtic and Rangers, but that goes somewhere else, doesn't it? So, yes, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, and she said, I saw the show. Thank you, that's great. Uh, she said, I saw you too, but was too shy to approach you. Ah, oh, that's a shame, Joanne. I don't bite. Unless I'm hungry. No, no, I don't. Oh, but <laughs> so uh, that's very kind of you. Thank you, Joanne. It's great that you came to the Edinburgh Festival. I've got to decide what to do this year or if to go. I keep saying that every year and I just kind of end up. It's a bit of a bit of a drug, but it's also quite an expensive drug, Edinburgh. Mainly the accommodation. But I won't go on about that here. What I shall do instead is, interestingly, Joanne, in Newcastle, um, you've chosen two songs or two pieces of music uh, by the same person. And that's my old mate, Robbie Williams. And it's not Robbie Williams, take that, Robbie Williams. It's Robbie Williams from Birmingham, who now lives in uh, Robber. Actually, that's what we've got. He, he added an extra B to his name. Because I also actually, 
knew another Rob Williams who makes guitars. Yeah, how weird. I mean, we're all in Birmingham. So, uh, Rob Williams. Rob Williams guitars, by the way. Have a look. He does really good guitars. Uh, and Rob B. B. Williams has written both of these tunes. So, this is, it's only short, this is his uh, theme tune. I suppose that's the right term, isn't it? For George Holmes and the Seven Dimensions. isn't it? That's the theme tune from George Holmes and Seven Dimensions, which is um, kind of a sci-fi kids thing. I've got to kind of get me, I should get me, me elevated pitch sorted, shouldn't I really? I mean, this is literary London. We're on Resonance 104.4 FM, London's art station. We're also on bohemianbritain.com, which is just a mess of anything to do with bohemian lifestyle i was to get me elevator p- elevator pitch that's what it is right so it's called george holmes and the seven dimensions it's about a little boy and his little sister uh who um actually comes home one day as per normal he gets a bit bullied does george uh and all the adults disappear why that's what the show's all about We've done episode one called The White Light. Episode two is called Billsley Common, uh, named after Billsley Common, which is common in Birmingham. In fact, Billsley Common is opposite the road I was born on, Hollyback Road in uh, in Billsley, King's Heath, and uh, in South Birmingham. And then actually they go straight from there. I don't want to give too much away, but then all of a sudden they go through this, the gateway to Billsley Common, you know, between the second and third flats. If you live there, you'll know what I'm talking about. They go through there and suddenly they find themselves... The Riverside in Hammersmith, which is also near where I live. So, you know, I've got the location sorted. Anyway, that was uh, that was for Joanna Newcastle. She also said, would you please play as well the theme tune from the Romeo and Juliet that you produced, uh, that wrote and directed at the, well, had produced actually, at the Edinburgh Fringe a couple of years ago. And as I mentioned earlier, that's also by Rob Williams. And here it is.
Ah, yes, I hope you like that. That was the main theme from Romeo and Juliet, which I adapted. I say wrote, actually, but Shakespeare had a bit to do with it. Yeah. I adapted and uh, directed and produced it with a brilliant cast at the Edinburgh Fringe. And that was Rob's take on the theme tune. I have to say, working with Rob Williams, which we've been doing since, ooh, 1992, I think, which was my very first offering. I wrote a version of Shakespeare's Henry V called Henry V, Line of England. Um, and I approached him originally to do a poster, and it was his partner at the time. He said, you know, he writes music, and he's really good, as you can hear. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, we had an email from, so I can't remember the name now, I can't find it actually, saying is there, is, is, is there an album of his work available? Not yet, but we'll work on that one. I think that might be. That was, of course, uh, for uh, Joanne in Newcastle. Uh, you heard George Holmes and the Seven Dimensions, and then a uh, version of Romeo and Juliet FC, as I renamed it, at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. And she said she saw me up there, but was too shy to approach me. Ah, oh, well, never don't worry about that, Joanne, from Newcastle, on time or off time. I'm not sure which Newcastle it is, but if I see you again, or if you see me again in Edinburgh, just come up and go, hello, it's me. Kath from California's not been in touch for a while, but then... It has been, what, 15 years or something like that since I first started doing this. She used to, and I used to do a Friday night live show from the studios at London Bridge. And she would always email and say, I'm, I always listen to you on the beach. So if Catherine California is around, then let us know how you're getting on and if you're still on the beach. This is Resonance 104.4 FM. I'm Nick Hennigan. It's Literary London. Um, also on BohemianBritain.com. And it's our legendary request spot. I like the idea of a spot. Well, I don't like spots, you know. I mean, we all came to adolescence, didn't we? Request show. Yeah. And uh, so that was Joanne in Newcastle. Another email here from Peter, who is in Chelsea in London. And Peter said, uh, love the show. Thanks, Peter. That's very kind of you. Uh, I saw the new film Wicked. And I wondered if you'd be able to play Defying Gravity and dedicate it to my niece, Charlie, who is a big Alphaba fan. And she's also 11 years old this Sunday morning. <sighs> Oh, Peter, what a lovely thought. Of course. Charlie, happy birthday. Go defy gravity. Alphaba, why couldn't you stay calm for once instead of flying off the handle? I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy now. I hope you're happy how you hurt your cause forever. I hope you think you're clever. I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy too. I hope you're proud how you would grovel in submission To feed your own ambition So though I can't imagine how I hope you're happy Right now Listen to me Just say you're sorry You can still be with the wizard what you've worked and waited for You can have all you've ever wanted I know, but I don't want it No, I can't want it Something has changed within me Something is not the same I'm through with playing by the rules of someone else's game Too late for second guessing Too late to go back to sleep It's time to trust my instincts and close my eyes and leap It's time to try Defying gravity I think I'll try Defying gravity And you can pull me down Can't I make you understand You're having delusions of grandeur I'm through accepting limits Cause someone says they're so some things I cannot change But till I try I'll never know Too long I've been afraid of Losing love I guess I've lost Well if that's love It comes at much too high a cost That's soon by Defying gravity Kiss me goodbye I'm defying gravity Pull me down 
Linda, come with me. Think of what we could do, together. Unlimited. Together we're unlimited. Together we'll be the greatest team there's ever been. Glinda, dreams the way we planned them. If we work in tandem, there's no fight we cannot win. Just you and I defy gravity. With you and I defy gravity, they'll never bring us down. Well, are you coming? You're happy now that you're choosing this. You too. I hope it brings you bliss. I really hope you get it and you don't live to regret it. I hope you're happy in the end. I hope you're happy, my friend. No wizard that there is or was Is ever gonna bring Wow, big song, <laughs> big song from a massive musical. Um, that was, of course, uh, um, you know, Alphabet, the kind of thing. Define Gravity, oh yes, that kind of thing. Uh, from the musical cast, the new musical cast of Wicked, of course they've now uh, have a film out, which I've not seen. I actually went and saw Wicked in the West End as part of my master's degree. Oh yeah, I'm a master of the arts. <laughs> Couldn't you tell? I, mind you, I didn't actually get to university till I was 50, but that's another story. Um, and more importantly, that's for Charlie. She is 11 years old on Sunday and is the niece of Peter in Chelsea uh, in London who, um, who asked for that, especially for you, Charlie. So happy birthday, Charlie. Love from Uncle Peter. Hey, ho oh, oh. ho. Now then, talking of families, Philadelphia. Yes, I have family. You may know Drexel, Drexel Hill. <laughs> Carol is in Philadelphia. She sent an email. Um, saying, uh, love the show. Again, thank you, Carol. It's very kind. I don't get a lot of feedback nowadays. That's very kind. Oh, and by the way, if you would like to get in touch, it's radio at mavericktheatre.co.uk. Radio at mavericktheatre.co.uk. Or nick, N-I-C-K, at bohemianbritain, one word, dot com. Nick at bohemianbritain.com are available on all those channels. And Carol in Philadelphia has been in touch to say, she said, I visited Wales and loved it. And I know you go there. I do. Thank you for paying attention. I've actually got half a play finished about Dylan Thomas called The Roaring Boys. And I'm kind of telling people that I've got half a play finished. I mean, I did it, what, six years ago, five years? What have I done with it since? Nothing. I actually did the first scenes for Dylan's family as well. And they really loved it. What have I done with this? The reason I'm saying this is that people are going to embarrass me and go, okay, where's the Dylan Thomas play then? Six years of sitting in your bottom drawer. It's not good enough. Anywho, I digress. So Carol in Philadelphia, she said, yes, I visited Wales and loved it. Would you be able to play Visit to America 
by Dylan Thomas. She said, some of his poetry is a bit uh, dense, but I really love his stories. Carol, I can't say no to anyone from Philadelphia. In the mustard seed sun, by full tilt river and switchback sea where the cormorant scud, in his house on stilts high among beaks and palavers of birds, this sand grain day in the bent bay's grave, he celebrates and spurns his driftwood 35th wind turned age. Heron, spire, and spear. Under and round him go flounders, gulls, on their cold, dying trails, doing what they are told. Curlews aloud in the congered waves work at their ways to death. And the rhymer in the long-tongued room who tolls his birthday bell toils towards the ambush of his wounds. Herons, steeple-stemmed, bless. In the thistledown fall, he sings towards anguish. Finches fly in the claw tracks of hawks on a seizing sky. Small fishes glide through wines and shells of drowned ship towns to pastures of otters. He in his slant racking house and the hewn coils of his trade perceives herons walk in their shroud. The livelong river's robe of minnows wreathing around their prayer. And far at sea he knows who slaves to his crouched eternal end under a serpent cloud. Dolphins dive in their turn turtle dust. The rippled seals streak down to kill and their own tide daubing blood slides good in the sleek mouth. In a cavernous swung wave silence wept white Angela's knells. Thirty-five bells sing struck on skull and scar where his loves lie wrecked, steered by the falling stars. And tomorrow weeps in a blind cage, terror will rage apart. The four chains break to a hammer flame And love unbolts the dark And freely he goes lost In the unknown famous light Of great and fabulous dear God Dark is a way and light is a place Heaven that never was Nor will be ever is always true and in that brambled void, plenteous blackberries in the woods, the dead grow for his joy. There he might wander bare with the spirits of the horseshoe bay or the stars, seashore dead, marrow of eagles, the roots of whales and wishbones of wild geese with blessed unborn God and his ghost and every soul his priest, gulled and chanter in young heaven's fold, be at cloud quaking peace, but dark is a long way. He on the earth of the night alone, with all the living praise, who knows the rocketing wind will blow the bones out of the hills, and the scythed boulders bleed, and the last raid shattered waters kick, masts and fishers to the still quick stars, faithlessly unto him who is the light of old and air-shaped heaven where souls grow wild as horses in the foam. 
Oh, let me midlife mourn by the shrined and druid heron's vows. The voyage to ruin I must run, dawn ships clouted aground. Yet, though I cry with tumble-down tongue, count my blessings aloud. Four elements and five senses, and man a spirit in love, Tangling through this spun slime To his nimbus bell cool kingdom come And the lost moonshine domes And the sea that hides his secret selves Deep in its black base bones Lulling of spheres in the seashell flesh And this last blessing most that the closer I move to death, one man through his sundered hulks, the louder the sun blooms, and the tusked ramshackling sea exults, and every wave of the way and gale I tackle the whole world then with more triumphant faith than ever was since the world was said spins its morning of praise i hear the bouncing hills grow locked and greener at berry brown fall and the dewlock sing taller this thunder claps bring and how more spend with angels ride the men sold fiery islands oh holier than their eyes and my shining men no more alone as i sail out to die Dylan Thomas there reading his own poem, as you probably gathered. Um, and that was especially for uh, Carol in Philadelphia. Visited Wales, loves it. Uh, I don't know where you went in Wales. Let me know. Yeah, I mean, mid Wales is kind of where we tend to hang out a little bit. Um, yes, and that was Visit to America, written by and performed by Dylan Thomas himself. Yes, and I've got to get this play. Now I've told you about it. Just have something, you know. Where's the play, Nick? Where's the Roaring Boys? Where is it? Half written. I'd say in a drawer, actually. That's quite a romantic notion, isn't it? Because we all write. We all tend to write online now, don't we? It's all kind of, you know, keyboards and stuff. and Tapping things. I am actually using a pen and paper today. Uh, I've printed off the... Uh, printed, you know, printing? Printed off the emails because I haven't only got one screen here. And yeah, look, pen. And paper. I've just written pen and paper. <laughs> with a pen ah oh, takes me back hey eh? remember the old days i do remember years ago actually uh, <laughs> where people talk about digital um pro progression uh birmingham uh, library wanted to do a uh, an archive one of the librarians said she'd like to do an archive of the maverick theater company which i set up in 1992 90, or 94 actually we set up maverick um just to sort of uh, you know increase more people get more people involved in the performing arts and i said oh do you want it on computer he said well paper if you've got paper that'd be better been around for a few thousand years it's not going to go out of fashion and of course she was quite right the computer discs that i had in my hand are no longer readable on that stunning note that's all we've got time for thank you so much for your emails please do keep in touch i love hearing from you and i'll see you next time i'm nick hennigan this is literary london on bohemianbritain.com but mainly and chiefly on london's art station residence 104.4 fm